a chip So say goodbye to everything you ever knew before And I'd understand if you went running out the door And I'll keep you safe And no harm will ever come to you, I swear And I'd kill if they even dare It's Iron a gosh Highness. darn murder party. Yay. We started at the same I time. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm great too. Sorry for starting at the same time. We just both. That's okay. You know, sometimes we end at the same time too. You know what? Sometimes it just suddenly rains and you have to bust down and take care of your saw. Welcome to Michigan Murders and Music, where we discuss murders in our gorgeous state. And top it off with a little homegrown music, leaving you with a happy ending and on, on a, a good, good note. note. Guess what? What? I would like to tell everybody out in our listening world, all of you amazing humans, that we have a new team member. Yes, we do. Woo! Joni D. Joni D. Joni D's in the house. I've Jeez. known her for a few years. A, a couple yeah. years, yeah. yeah. A good friend of Boots, a good yep. friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Great person. Now a team member of Michigan Murders and Music, so we are growing. And how great is that? And we will grow more if you tell a friend or two about us. Your Highness. What? May I give an explicit content warning? I guess so. Okay. I mean, if you have to. Okay. Uh, You probably fucking have to. Oh, Jesus. Already. Her Highness most likely will use some naughty words that are offensive. It's fucking raining again. And is it really? Yeah. Oh my goodness! It, really is. it wasn't even supposed to. No, we it checked was supposed it. We both to checked all it last week, though. Mm-hmm. But it never she did. she is going to uh, use words that are uh, offensive, and please do not let youngsters listen to this uh, penis stuff. Vagina. Also, if you find out that your older sibling male or female, for the last 14 years has been providing personal services to lonely ladies for a fee. What? That's Did you n- just fart? Right? No. That's not on us. I, I, I always wondered how he, he could afford Wait. <laughs> such a nice Camaro and two Corvettes. He never seemed stressed no. about anything. That, no. That's not on us. Camaros that, are not allowed. Well, I, Camaros, Trans Ams, you know, and Firebirds. Them. You are instantly off my list. Also, we don't have insurance for whatever the fuck you just said about the whatever that person was doing. <laughs> I really wasn't listening to you. I Thank was watching you, the rain. Everybody, and for honestly, letting us see into your ears. Our neighbor next door. What what our neighbor do? I don't know. I'm just watching him. It's art. Oh, you weirdo. He's old. You got to make sure dude gets around all right. He's good. Well, we have just only a couple of new people that liked us and our new listeners that I know of. I'll take two. I'll take two. We've got four. Jacob Remard. Jacob, yeah. The band Pretoria. Pretoria, I like them. We featured them. them. Isaac Golchinski started following us. Oh, Isaac. He's a cool dude. Yeah, he is. And Dark Side Tour Guides. Thank you, everybody, for following us on the socials. I'm not a super huge social poster. You'll take note of that, especially in the summer. But please share us with a friend. We would appreciate it so, so, so much. Who are we featuring this week? Wait up. God, you always jump ahead. Why are you so antsy in your pantsies, boot? Your dick, you're just sitting there. We have a website, and on that website, there's merch. And there's a, if you're feeling tipsy jar, uh, where you could help us with our hobby podcast. Also, if you guys would like a sticker, send us an email at michiganmurdersofmusic.com, and we, in return, will send you a sticker. Very nice. I mean, you got to put your address in the email. Yeah. Or I won't know yeah. where the fuck to send it. Right. Yeah. Okay. You gotta. Where are we going? All right. Did we? Wait. 
Who are we featuring this week? I tried to tell you earlier. I know. Well, now I'm asking. We are featuring Bleak Black. Bleak Blake. Did I write black? I don't think so. I just read it wrong. (laughs) Bleak Blake. Bleak Blake. We are featuring Bleak Blake. Yep. A solo artist. It's going to be good. A little punk rock. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. throw up your hand. Oh, I can't throw up my hand. I, I have my hands full of paperwork right now. Where we're going is the Highland Park area. I'll throw up my hand. the Woodward Corridor. You're going to go right in the crotch of the thumb, basically. Just uh, below the crotch of the thumb. Way down here, Detroit area. Oh, see, you, way down now here. he's got his fucking hand up. Okay, down in... The Detroit areola. Yep. Not proper Detroit, but oh, he's Detroit throwing gang area. signs over there. He's like, not proper Detroit, yo. Right, right. Okay, it's, first off, it's the where? Highland Park and Woodward Corridor area. Okay, Highland Park, I believe I've heard of. What does the Woodland Park Corridor mean? It's Woodward, and that's, Woodward is a street. That is very famous. There's a uh, Dream Cruise. Uh, I think it's called the Dream Cruise, where oh, guys like, take their hot rods and all their classic cars and yeah, cruise them. Yeah, up we and have down. that in Grand Rapids too. It's like once a year. Okay. It's really cool. And is it a. Um, it's a major th- street that a major, uh, you've a major been on and you didn't thoroughly. realize it. Yeah. Oh, it, well, what the hell? Uh-huh. It runs north and south, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. All right, I think we have covered bases, the ba- the base eye. Tonight, let's get to the story. We are featuring Benjamin Thomas Tony Tony Atkins, aka the Highland Park Strangler and the Woodward Corridor Killer. I still want to say Woodland. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's because of that mall. Probably. Tony was born in a poor neighborhood of Detroit in 1968. What? I know another butthole who was born that year. Why, yes, I was. Except for, I don't think he went on and murdered. Mm, Why, no, I haven't. His parents were drug and alcohol abusers. Okay. And his dad left (laughs) shortly after he was born. They must have been really bad. There's a line that you have to cross to... You know, that's all I'm saying. In 1970, little two-year-old Tony ran away. He ran away at mm. two. That's Emmett's age, dude. How did? Do, how he, does a kid that young even? Well, he, there was nobody to go back to. No, no, no place for the the police to take him. Oh my god! So he ended up in an orphan orphanage where he was physically assaulted by other children and raped by his caseworker. At the age of 10. Ugh. For the next five years, he was continuously subjected to sexual harassment by other boys until he finally escaped to live with his mother and his brother. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got shit to say. I am so fucking tired of our foster system. This has been going on for decades. AIDS, it's blatantly known that most of the people, not everybody, don't start hashtagging shit at me. Mm -hmm. Most of the people do it for the fucking check. Why why is nobody changing this situation? Yeah, Most kids get We might be getting controversial here. I don't know. Whether I agree with you or not. I don't care if I'm controversial. This is not okay because this is what always happens. Yeah. And, and sexual abuse happens Always. within foster homes. Always. Whether it's from the family or the, the kids themselves it, doing it. It needs to be fixed. Yeah, there's, there's a problem. Anyway. Sorry, that <sighs> was my rant. Sorry, it's but good. not sorry. It needs to be fixed. Tony's mom was a prostitute and would often bring her work home with her. He was traumatized by this. Wait, and was she a pimp and a prostitute too? Just a prostitute. Okay. He was traumatized by this and ended up leaving the house for the streets in the late 80s. He developed a drug, crack in particular, and alcohol addiction, and often slept in homeless shelters. 
Tony liked to prey on downtrodden women, victims who were middle aged, destitute women, sex workers, and drug addicts. We've you know we've covered. Well, it's easy pickings. Unfortunately, yeah, sadly. They're just... He knew what he was doing. He was, he was a predator. They're very vulnerable mm-hmm. because of their situation. He lured them multiple buildings and houses where he would sexually assault and sodomize them, strangle them, and leave their bodies at the crime scene. I can't even. I know. So not only did he belittle them in every way fucking possible, he did it in a gross abandoned building in Detroit and then just left them there. Mm-hmm. Bye. Just, I'm out. What a dick fuck. Strangely, he was described by acquaintances as a pleasant and everybody in the neighborhood would talk to him. But when he got yep. drunk or high, he mm. turned into, he was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He yeah. turned into a different dude. Yeah, man. he hated women. He'd get mean and he would curse the shit out of women. And I'm wondering if it was tequila that did it. <laughs> Could be. (laughs) He started his killing spree when he was just 23 years old. Holy crap. I mean, compared to the last kid. Oh, my goodness. That's old. Your Highness, we're going to go down a list. Multiple victims. Oh, he's a serial killer, isn't he? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You have no idea how many serial killers are in Michigan from Michigan. That's weird. It's fucked up. It is. The first victim to be discovered was 30-year-old Debbie Ann Friday. She was found on December 14th, 1991. The second victim was found a few days later. The body of 26-year-old Bertha Jean Mason was found. Victim three, January 3rd, 36-year-old Patricia Cannon George. Victim four, January 25th, 39-year-old Vicki Truelove. So within, that's just over a month, he's killed four people. Okay, so we know that that you don't just start killing four people all of a sudden at age 23 years old. So I bet there's other shit he did before he was 23. He probably took his neighbor's cat. Oh, gross. Don't even. I won't. Okay. At the end of January, Atkins was arrested and taken to the police station for interrogation. They put a light on him, and they were like, where the fuck were you, dick? Right. But due to lack of evidence, he was released. On February 17th, the corpses of three girls were found in three separate rooms of the former Monterey Hotel in Highland Park. Oh, my God. I have no idea where that is. but I don't know, but I will... Make note of it and try to take a picture. We might need find a road a trip. Yeah. Okay, so he just took three girls into the same place, knowing that there was, like, think of this. He's on his third girl. He knows he's already left two women, other mm-hmm. girls. Ugh. Mm-hmm. <sighs> they were victim five, 34-year-old Valerie Chalk. Victim Vic- six, 23-year-old Juanita Hardy. And a Jane Doe who's whose identity remains unknown to this day. As with his other victims, all of these women had been sodomized and raped prior to strangulation. So he blatantly had a a thing a, in that direction. Hate for women, maybe kind of like his mom, who was a prostitute. Mm. Atkins said to the investigators about One of his victims, Juanita Hardy. I never really planned to kill her after raping her. Having sex and hating her for being a woman. I had the desire to kill her for being a woman. I just wanted to hate her and cause her harm. I think he had flashbacks of seeing his mom being not a woman, but a whore. I'm sorry, that's a bad thing to say. If your kid sees it, that's not okay. If you're not, working the streets, man, do what you got to do. But don't kids. bring that shit home. Victim 7, April 9. The body of 28-year-old Brenda Mitchell found in an abandoned house after she had gone missing four days prior. She had gone to the store with her two children, 
And Mitchell was found almost completely naked except for a scarf wrapped around her neck. She had taken a lethal dose of drugs prior to her death, so her death was classified as an overdose initially. Ugh. Fucker. Victim eight, April 15th, was 27-year-old Vicki Beasley Brown. I love that name. Victim nine, June 15th, 45-year-old Joanne O'Rourke. Victim 10 and victim 11, 20-year-old Oshania Weimer and 29-year-old Latanya Shawanda Smith. Their disappearances were not connected to the murders until Atkins confessed, and the bodies were found at the indicated place the same day he confessed. Weird. He must have changed his M.O. a little bit so they didn't connect him. Yeah. Connect the murders initially. Oh my God! What victim are we on? Ten I don't, and no, eleven. I'm, I'm gonna lose We're track on pretty soon. Eleven He's people. Very, very prolific. That's more than both the brothers from the last episode combined. His, his murderous rampage only lasted for nine months, leading the FBI to dub him as the most prolific serial killer. Dude, eleven people in nine months. That's that's a wackadoodle. Oh yeah. Atkins was arrested on rape charges on August 21st, 1992, after he was identified on the Detroit streets by none other than Darlene Saunders, who was 34 years old, who had been sodomized and raped by him in October 1991, managed to get away, and was able to identify this dick. Yeah, but, you know, when he was caught and then you know interrogated or whatever under questioned the brig, under the light white light where were you on he, he denied any involvement august claiming, 21st 1992 denied any involvement claiming he was a homosexual and had absolutely no interest in women oh my god i think out of i listen to true crime every day like yes, eight you do. hours i think this is the very first time i've I've heard this defense. I mean, I'm sure Nancy Grace has heard it or something, but, you know, Mm -hmm. my little piss aunt self hasn't. After 12 hours of interrogation, he admitted to the murders of the 11 women. Describing in detail the appearance and clothing of the victims. So he must have had quite a photographic. Oh, he knew. Yeah. Photographic memory. He gave him. Yeah. During the the interrogation, Atkins said that the motive for the murders was his, I'm not going to say this right. Misogynistic views against girls and women engaged in prostitution. Oh, ding, ding, ding. In other words, I'm letting shit out against my mom. Mm Mm-hmm. I got mommy issues. Yeah. Mama. Yeah. During his trial, he confessed to the murders but claimed that he was insane. Okay, how can you claim to killing 11 people and remembering every single thing and then turn right. around and claim to be insane? That's not right. Well, I'm not saying he's completely there. Oh, for crying but out loud. He still did it. His lawyer demanded leniency toward his client on the grounds that Atkins had been abused as a child. Uh, according, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, so has uh, everybody. According to, ask my own kids, I probably beat Uh, them. To a certain degree. According to the lawyer, the psychological trauma, coupled with his drug addiction, eventually led to his mental, emotional, and behavioral problems. I'm going to go ahead and say he probably had those before his drug problems. I'm pretty sure. And probably before his drinking problems. Yeah. However, after a four-month trial and three days of deliberations, the jury found Benjamin Atkins guilty of 11 counts of first-degree murder and one count of first-degree criminal sexual conduct. In April of that year, he was sentenced to 11 life imprisonment terms. Uh, Yeah, I don't think he's getting out. Pretty sure he's not getting out. Yeah, you're going to stay in there for a minute, motherfucker. After his conviction... Atkins was transferred to prison, but due to health issues, he was quickly transferred to Dwayne Waters Hospital. 
where he died on September 17, 1997, at age 29 from an AIDS-related illness. Only four years into a sentence. Okay, so there's a part of me that I'm very happy about this because, you know, I hate that we support them and they get all their dental care and everything's taken care of for them and they get to eat three square meals a day where most people in America don't. Yep. However... Oh, he kind of got a pussy way out. Oh, uh, he kind of got me? a. Excuse um, me. Yeah, no, it's yeah. it's good. So you know, yeah, we don't have to support his ass and that motherfucker dead, mm. dead. Yeah, in the it, forehead. There is never an excuse for brutal rape and murder. Uh uh-uh. uh. But this guy didn't stand a chance at any sort of normal adult life. How could he? You know, he first saw his mom prostituting yeah then he would he ran away at the age of two then he himself got abused over and over again sexually it, it's nuts how are you gonna have a normal life i'm not sure the system screwed him up but he was already screwed up he was from a very young and age i am sure the system screwed him up even more how can it not that needs to be changed i'm telling you there are things that can be done Well, you you might wonder why he didn't get help for his behavior. Why would he when any sort of help and love and comfort and protection had already failed him miserably? Like, you, when you're that young, you think that's normal. And yeah, you don't know to go ask. You have no idea because you're. Why do you want help? This this is the way things are. Yeah, this is how it is. But at two. Okay, we spent an entire day with a two-year-old Saturday. Yeah. We're still tired, by the way. No, oh they goodness. were really good. They were fantastic. They were really good. He spent a good hour just pouring water into a truck. He did. But could you imagine him just running away because things are... I can't even fathom that. That's two years while, while mom was turning a trick. Two years old. Yeah, no wonder they took him to put him in protective custody. That is one... Oof. fucked up story yeah also it kind of makes you think there's still like a gazillion abandoned buildings in detroit a, a lot of them they've they've been demolishing them they're working but on the, it but yeah. there's still so many buildings and homes that are abandoned like bodies or time will tell yeah. things I come don't up know. what a what a horribly great story there are some difficult I'm areas over there. Really hate when street workers are targeted. Um, it Ugh. it just grinds my or gears. Any, anybody, for that matter, well, it, obviously yeah. anybody. Death and murder is not okay, but it's just. I mean, some of them are doing it to support their drug habit, and is that okay? No, Mm-mm. but it's their fucking life. They don't deserve to be picked off like a. Like an easy victim. Yeah. Just swat it off the wall it. like a fly. Okay. Your Highness. I need a happy ending, oh, boot. Please. Do you have I one it ready would for never me? Come. Yes. Woo! Bleak Blake. <laughs> I need a happy ending. Okay, here's Bleak Blake. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Blake. I'm sorry, I, Blake. That I, was just I'll perfect. give you a happy ending later. <laughs> Oh, snap. Oh, yeah. Let's cheers mm. to that. Right there, girl. Yeah. Mm. Cheers. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys. Thanks for sticking with us. Please share us with a friend. Buy I'd some merch. like to thank Joni D. Joni again. D. Thanks again for being on our team. Mm-hmm. Loving it. We are going to leave you with Bleak Blake's song called Retrotopia. D. P. G. Lace up your vans or your combat boots and we can get back to our roots and hit the streets. Grab a 40 and a pint, we can drink well into the night And we can dance on this Indian summer These days of youth are fleeting, your 
26 and bleeding Nobody cares like they used to Nobody cares like they used to Grab your skateboard and a joint And we'll get right down to the point We can ride all night Kids today can't hold a spade They are the future anyway My nostalgia is worth nothing Listening to Dusty Records Oh, nobody cares like they used to Nobody cares like they used to Nobody cares like they used to Nobody cares on a dirty screen crack skin on thumbs hold up your arms put down your guns and we can live to fight another night marijuana and black coffee don't you wanna come and join me for a Turkish royal up by the back door Stupid fucking kids that are still feel dumb It wasn't that long ago That I was stepping on your toes And it took me no time flat To realize where I was at Once I stepped on that dirty pink grip tape I stepped on that dirty pink grip tape well, I stepped on that dirty pink grip tape I stepped on that dirty pink grip tape And I rode And I rode And I rode And I rode And I Thank you for choosing Michigan you! Murders and Music. Yeah. Please rate the no, show wherever great. you listen. Michigan Murders and Music is produced by The Boots. Episodes are researched and written by Your Highness. Edited by Your Highness. Views and opinions are the sole stupidity of us and us alone. Don't blame others, please. Listening to this podcast could quite possibly cause major problems to your earballs and definitely will mess up your kids. Permission has been given to us by the bands and we've purchased our music on Bandcamp.com. Support your local music scene and all local music scenes.